Cardinals, Sassy Girls, Poison Candy, OG. This is as OG as it gets with Crevasse at Jekyll Bates because these were like the first patterns. Um, and, and I still, I mean, you guys still like them. I update them from time to time. Like I'll do little things on the sides of them. But this is one of my original, like literally OG, um, Bull Shoals Pumpkin Seeds. And uh, I've got two of these going out to Daniel Clevenger, who, so let's get a couple things straight. Um, it's been a rough week and everybody has rough weeks. So if you're going through a rough week as a painter or as a angler and you're getting into a new season or you're just, if, you, if you're struggling, let me tell you what we all struggle. Doesn't matter if... You have 553 videos on a YouTube channel and you paint for tons of people and you teach like I do or, and you're trying to run a business, we'll get into that in a second, um, or you're just starting out as a painter and you're getting frustrated because you can't get beyond a certain level or your gun is jamming up all the time or you're thinking that you're painting better patterns than your customer wants and we'll get into that in a second. but. Everybody goes through struggles. So this is the get out of the doldrums, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, and keep soldiering on. Keep going on because you're going to get past that hump, I promise. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen to everybody. So let me tell you about the week that I've had. Um, today is Thursday. I'm filming this Thursday. Probably going to upload it Thursday, even though I've uploaded like a ton of updates but I just I feel like I need to say it and I feel like you guys should probably hear it because the one thing that I pride myself on in this channel is transparency I always want you guys to know what's going on with me if I'm going through any craziness uh, which usually I don't um, but lately I have and some of it has to do with ordering blanks some of it has to do with customers and just crazy stuff going on and some of it has to do with my own mistakes so hey we're all human um, and most of you guys, let me, let me impart some wisdom to you folks that are starting up a business in this type of work or any type of work. Level with your customers. Be honest. Reach out to them if you're having issues because I promise you it goes a long way. If you're having problems keeping up with demands or you're having problems with, like in my situation, I order two or three times a year a ton of blanks. And I do it not because I don't want to give love to the stateside brokers of blanks. I simply do it for business purposes. I have to keep costs as low as I possibly can because this is, this is how I feed my family. This is how I do it. I don't do it through going to work every day for eight hours a day. I've done that. I did that for years and years and years and years and decades. Um, I made a decision, a conscious decision to start a business and I never looked back and it's not always easy. I'm not making a million dollars. I don't have a penthouse suite. I don't, I have a, I have a house with a family and dogs and cats and I live and work right here and you guys see most of what I do. But it's not to show love to people like Brian or Russ Allen. I cut my own stencils most of the time. And I'm very blessed to get gifts from some of you sometimes or, or discounts because I like to promote the things that work for me and I like to teach. So in order to teach you guys to do what I do, I love to spread the love. And if you guys have a fantastic business and I can be a part of that and help you get some recognition because you guys are doing fantastic work, then I'll do it because that's what I do. But it's not always that easy. So this whole thing, I'm not going to get into exports and health concerns and all of that, but it's got some stuff tied up overseas. So um, basic, the only thing I'm going to say about what's going on stateside and with exports and everything that's coming out of Asia, whether it's China or Taiwan or Korea or Japan, they're having a hard time because there's this nasty stuff going around and you guys all know about it. We don't need to talk about it, the coronavirus. Um, but regardless of whether or not it's affecting products, it's affecting human life. And there's a lot of people over there that are really, really sick through no fault of their own. It's not their fault that they've gotten sick, but that slows down production. It's not necessarily that you're getting blanks that are infected. That's, I don't think that that's the case at all. Um, I'm not a doctor, so I'm not going to prophesize what's happening, but it's slowed down production. And I know that a lot of the um, merchants in 
America and around the world are starting to feel it. And we do too. We always expect a slowdown around the end of January for Chinese New Year. It's when they celebrate their New Year and they take a holiday. Um, their employees get some time off of work, which I'm sure they need. Um, and we just expect a slowdown. But compound that with what's going on around the world today. And we've had some issues with some, not with all, but I have. I, don't, I can't speak for any other merchants. But I've had some problems getting in stuff that I had expected and have already paid for. So as a small business person, you can only imagine that when you've already paid for stuff and you have just a little bit to allocate for funds because you're running a small business and not a mega company. Um, every penny that I can save, I try to save. And when I have to spend excess money on stuff that I've already purchased and hasn't gotten here, then it, it, it just gets tough. But going back to what I was talking about in the beginning of the video, be honest with your customers. If you're having a hard time, tell them you're having a hard time. And guess what? Most people are understanding. Most people get that, hey, I, you know, I had one customer that reached back out to me. As a matter of fact, it was Daniel. Um, he's like, hey, yeah, because his order has been on hold since January 12th. It's not normally the case around here. I normally don't get this backed up, but I'm waiting on specific blanks. So for him, I'm waiting on a few LJMDs. I have sourced them here in the States. But again, I'd already paid for a ton, and it's very difficult to allocate additional funds for stuff. But I did that. So everybody's getting their orders. It's not that. Um, but I reached out. I reach out to everybody. I'm like, hey, I'm waiting on half your order. I can ship half your order, but this is what's going on. And then you bite the bullet. You're like, I can either offer you a refund or we can split the shipment. Or if you're patient, you can wait for it all. And most of the time, I'd say 85 to 90% of the time, customers are like, hey, thank you for reaching out. I had no idea. I didn't want to bother you. No, you're busy. No, you've got YouTube. No, you do this and that. And but they're, but they're decent because I'm honest with them. But if you leave your customers in the dark and you don't contact them and things are going crazy and you don't know what's going on or when you're going to get merchandise and then, because it's, it's also a very common trait because people don't know what to say to their customers sometimes. But it's also a very common trait when people just kind of put their heads in the sand and go like, oh crap, what do I do now? So make an effort not to do that if you're a merchant. And I'm going to get off my soapbox now, and we're going to talk about these briefly. I've, 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 eight minutes of this has been what's going on with this week. But then you do get occasionally, you get somebody that, okay, so I, I've had to apologize to customers. There have been a couple of mix-up in orders where somebody has gotten somebody else's merchandise. Um, and then you just spray something for somebody else, and... Um, there you go. So Mike Hansen, thank you for being awesome. You got your, you should have your ice crappie by now. Sean Weem. So let's talk about this merchandise. So I painted two of these. They're off the website. It's my long eared gilts and S crank. But um, I was super proud of myself and I sent them off to him and he had waited for probably three or four weeks to get it and he got it and it absolutely wasn't what he wanted. But what I had forgotten because I have so many multimedia formats that people message me through when they're asking for stuff, is that he had um, somebody paint a rifle stock for him in almost like a psychotropical color lizard iguana with, it was like a perch pattern, but it had these colors, but much, much brighter. So even though this is the exact same recipe as I use on the website, it was way too dark for what he was looking like, and he was upset, so I can understand that he had already sent me the picture, and I'd forgotten that he had sent me a picture. So I said, hey, just send these back, and I'll make it right for you. So I will make it right for you guys, um, but thank you for your patience, and you don't have to put me on auto blast. None of you guys do. Um, if there's an issue, I'll hook you up. I'll take care of it because I'm a business person. It's what I do, um, and I'm certainly not going to jeopardize my reputation. Or my honor as a human being and not deal with issues. But issues do happen. So if you guys are going through issues, hang in there. Go through them. Um, it'll make you stronger. I promise. I promise it'll make you stronger. So Sean Weems, you're going to get two brand new, extremely loud, extremely fluorescent <laughs> versions of this. And hey, you guys still like these because both of these sold last night. 
um, on auction. So, and that allows me to um, purchase more stuff and make more awesome baits for you guys. So these are OG. These are the original Bull Shoals pumpkin seeds, and I like to update my own patterns from time to time. So this is a very basic pattern. It's three or four colors. I added uh, just a little hint of ear flap on the side of them. There's really nothing special except for the blending. So this goes from a very dark to a very light on the back. It's a like a iridescent electric blue in Createx going back to a sky blue. And then tropical green, pineapple, um, some sunset red, and orange. And it's a fun, great, great spring pattern. They key in on this belly, and they key in on those yellow eyes that make that pop, and a little bit of ear flap that's just a low-pressure spray. So that is that. And then the same thing I did with the citrus, but the citrus, everybody does citrus, right? So the only things that I'll do just to make my patterns a little bit different is I'll add little hints of detail. Like here in the gill, on the gill plates, and on the back, I've got just a little bit of netting spray. And it just dresses up your bait. It's a great way to dress up your bait. And it's super easy to do, no issues, and it makes a very ordinary, everybody sells citrus into my typical old blue eyes pattern. And these blue eyes are from Lure Parts Online. I generally don't um, stray from the crazy stuff on regular old stock baits. But um, anyways, these are the Sassy Gills. You guys have seen them there. Um, he's got a whole set. This is Bob. Um, Bob has Bob's an awesome angler. Most of you guys that are pro staff with me uh, for the last few years are doing well, and I'm so proud of you guys, and I'm really excited that you guys are actually doing well on my baits. Um, but this is a sassy gill. He's gone back-to-back -back with uh, Angler of the Year in his state, as have a few others of my pro staff, so I'm real happy for Bob. Um, these. These are cool. So I just put these on Facebook. And I'll do a little tutorial on here as well. The eyes, we're going to start out with these eyes. These are a rust orange uh, reflective eye from Jetson's, uh, from John over at Jetson Lures, Jetson Lure Eyes. And every crawl that I've pulled out of the river or that's been in the mouth of a small mouth or a large mouth has pretty much looked like this this spring. So they're very pale. I don't have any true white left in this because I've kind of misted an overspray of some bone. So this is like a bone orange, sunset red, tropical green with those killer, killer, killer Jetson Lure eyes. And just a tiny bit of red. Just a tiny bit of red. Enough red to make the bait pop if it's a little bit stained. Cardinals, you guys have seen them. I've been selling them. Um, we tested this bait when I was on the river the other day because I like to test stuff. Uh, I'll random batch test. I'll paint a couple for myself um, and then make sure that you guys are getting something that swims. These have got a really tight wobble, super tight wobble, which is great for the spring. I don't know that I would always want a super tight. I, I think during the summer and fall, a little bit looser of a searching pattern would probably be ideal, at least for me, for my style fishing. Um, but this is this is a cool, I love the pattern, and I haven't seen anybody else do a cardinal. I think maybe I'm the first to do it. I have no idea. Maybe somebody else has done it somewhere. But I love the feathering, very similar to the rat, but I love the contrast and the red and the black, and it looks like a cardinal head. Uh, even the way that these lipless are put together these look like the little crest on the on the head of a cardinal so really happy with that and yes it is a match the hatch yes it is if it's cardinal you betcha this is a poison candy and you guys did not see so i there's a lot of stuff that i send out of here that you guys just don't get a chance to see or else all i'd ever put up would be updates because that's all i'd be doing um because there's just a ton of stuff but this is a lipless version of some wiggle warts. I did post a couple of pictures online, I think, on my Facebook page, on my general personal Facebook page, um, and I might have put one up on Instagram, but this is a cool pattern. It was a request, a very specific request for an angler that's going to be somewhere in Tennessee fishing, 
Um, and hey, while I'm on that subject, so kind of one segue after another, my thoughts and my prayers and my love and just good vibes all, all over the place going out to my angling friends and friends and families um, in Tennessee after that F3 slash four, might have been a four, was on the ground, that tornado was on the ground for an hour. I know there's a lot of devastation, but uh, keep, keep faith, keep uh, that community spirit. You guys will rebuild, you'll be stronger. And um, we here in Arkansas sure know what it's like to go through tornadoes. I have been blessed and lucky and have not, uh, some of my family out here has. Um, 1983 Christmas Eve was 82 or 83 uh, it, it cut one of our family houses in half and luckily everybody lived but we know what we know what that kind of loss and tragedy is like so my heart goes out to you guys in Tennessee today for sure um, and all this week and the coming weeks because it's gonna take a while to rebuild from something of that magnitude stay strong keep in faith and um, and be kind to one another we all need to be kind to one another anymore. It's just, just too much ugliness. We got we to gotta move past that. We're America, folks. We're way better than that, right? Right. So this is what's going on with these. This, you guys have seen. I think I've shown you everything. The sassy gills you guys have seen before. But these are really cool. And then um, we were talking about me and Matt Monahan, who is another phenomenal painter. It's not just me out here. I try to promote as many of you as I can. Um, this is a coral trout and it's going um, at just I think I'm gonna start cataloging some different fish for myself and maybe do a shadow box but no plans to sell this don't think it's gonna be an awesome swimmer it is Matt you're right it is the knockoff of that um, that jackal tian they have a couple of different sizes the 60s and 70s it's lead weighted in the face. It's very heavy. It's bulky. Um, it is a nose diver. Um, so I not even hyped about uh, if this were a jackal, I'd swim it. You betcha, but it's not. Um, it does have cool eyes in it. I wanted to do a really neat different pattern. I like to do saltwater patterns just to mix it up a little bit because saltwater fish have really, really good color in them. Um, some of the freshwater stream fish to uh, do as well, but this is that coral trout. This is all hand stenciled. That's not a sticker. That was just a hand cut stencil. And then I, the way I do it is that I'll paint the entire thing so it's red and then I did the blue dots. There were no white lines or white dots under the blue dots. I just did it directly on top of the bait. Works out pretty well because they're opposite colors. And um, then on the stencil cut, I'll do a white primer. Like I'll cut the stencil, lay the stencil on the bait on both sides. And uh, we'll show you that in a couple of upcoming things. But then I'll throw white, and then that's got a little bit of yellow. And then it's all pressure spray. It's a pressure game, making sure that you do it just light enough to where it looks realistic, like you're shading. So this is just a shading technique, really small, on a hand-cut stencil that I did that I wanted the pectoral fin, which is a yellowish color on these coral trouts. And that is way more than news that you guys needed to hear but i wanted to share that not everybody has great weeks all the time so that's it that's what i've got for you guys today thank you for listening and i will talk to you on the next spray session what's coming out see ya mm -hmm.